Welcome to another Who Is episode of Capes and Tights, a comic book and pop culture podcast. I'm your host, Justin Soderberg. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram at Capes and Tights Podcast, Twitter at Capes and Tights Pod, Apple, Spotify, all your major podcasting platforms that's out there, and check us out at capesandtights.com. This is another bonus episode featuring just myself. Adam will be back for regular scheduled programming on Tuesday's episode next week. But this is is a bonus episode to talk about Morbius. Morbius is coming up in the theaters here pretty soon, finally. And I thought, why not tell everybody a little bit about who Morbius is? Because you may not know who he is in the comic books and what we can expect from the Sony Spider-Verse movies. So Morbius was created by Roy Thomas and artist Gil Kane. So Roy Thomas is the writer, artist Gil Kane. Uh, His first appearance was back in The Amazing Spider-Man number 101 of October 1971. His alter ego, Morbius, Michael Morbius or Dr. Michael Morbius in the comic books as well. So another uh, movie being created, uh, like we talked about earlier in this week about Moon Knight with the TV show being created where the first appearance was not in their own title. Uh, This is a awesome New thing coming out here with Morbius, Michael Morbius, Dr. Michael Morbius coming out here on in the big screen. So we'll check that out. Powers and abilities is a genius level intellect. He's a trained biologist and biochemist, superhuman strength, speed, senses, and durability. He has flight hypnotism and alter uh, accelerated healing. Uh, His weakness is obviously the hunger. The one true weakness Morbius has is the supernatural vampires possess is the must they must intru- indu- uh, I can't speak right now that they must ingest fresh blood several times a week in order to maintain his physical and mental vitality. Sunlight is also a weakness as well as his mental instability. So those are just normal weaknesses you'd see for something of a vampire uh, person because uh, Morbius's technical title is Morbius comma the living vampire. Funny story about that is you can't have undead people in comic books back in the 70s so they made him a living vampire not a dead vampire which is awesome Uh, his bio according to the interwebs or according to marvel comics is after a desperate attempt to save his own life dr michael morbius stalks the night as morbius the living vampire suffering from a rare blood disease morbius turned to a cure that used vampire bat dna it mutated him in a blood-sucking creature of the night a pseudo vampire. Initially, his adversary was Spider Man and Blade. Morbius became a vigilante while struggling with his instability and his lust for blood. His subsequent efforts to cure the his, in his subsequent efforts to cure his horrible condition. So that's their comic book version of what Morbius will be. Again, like we mentioned in the first of these Who Is episodes bonus episodes here on capes and tights is there's a possibility that they veer somewhat from that, but I'll give you the Sony verse bio uh, right now, a scientist suffering from a rare blood disease whose attempts to cure himself afflicted him with a form of a transgenic vampirism, gaining superhuman abilities in, uh, but none of the superstitious weaknesses associated with vampires. Leto um, was drawn to the character's struggle with his disease and the moral implications of the hero who was first who has a thirst for blood. So that's the first Sony Bioverse thing. Uh, so check that out. So there's a difference between those two there a little bit that there's no actual weaknesses in a sense. I guess that hunger is going to probably be there. We see during the trailer, um, but uh, again, there'll be some changes between what you see in the comic books and you read and what you see on the big screen come. April 1st. So it's scheduled to release April 1st, like I mentioned, 2022, after it delayed multiple times due to the pandemic. It was initially supposed to be released in July of 2020, uh, but due to the pandemic, it has been uh, delayed two or three times now and is finally going to hit theaters. It's going to run about an hour and 44 minutes, uh, which is pretty good. I like a sub two, two hours. I'd like it to be about an hour and 30 minutes, but hour and 45 is perfect. And it was filmed for a budget of $75 million. To give you some, some perspective, uh, we're tra- we, we talked uh, Spider-Man, Spider-Verse, uh, or it's not Spider-Verse, Spider-Man, uh, No Way Home, and that was filmed for $200 million. So again, a little bit different of a budget there. This is going to be more of a horror, uh, darker theme thing because Morbius is that style. Um, you're going to see, uh, because it's also a vampire, you see that darkness, whereas obviously some of these other Marvel Cinematic Universe films are a little bit more bright and bubbly. 
to continue. It was directed by Daniel Espinosa, who is also responsible for the directing of the movie Life and Safe House. Um, so he's got a couple of movies under his belt, but it's pretty excited to see him hit the uh, comic book related films here with this movie. It was written by Ma- uh, Matt Sazima and Burke Sharpless, who also wrote Power Rangers, the newer one, Gods of Egypt, The Last Witch Hunter, and Dracula Untold. So I like that idea of the Drac- Dracula and The Last Witch Hunter and writing this film kind of connects a little bit with the whole vampire part. Uh, it was produced by Avi Arad from um, Sony, Matt Tolmack, and Lucas Foster. So those are your producers for the sh- uh, movie as well. So obviously this is a big movie. Um, we got Jared Leto starring as Dr. Michael Morbius. Uh, you have Matt Smith as Milo. Uh, Adria Arjona. Yeah, there we go. As uh, Martin Bancroft. Jared Harris as Nicholas. Al Madrigal as Alberto Rodriguez, Tyrus Gibson as Simon Stroud, and the appearance of MCU's own Adrian Toomes slash Vulture, played by Michael Keaton. So that's kind of cool. We'll see how that connects with the whole MCU thing. We still don't know what the hell is going on between Sony and Marvel and what works for the MCU and what doesn't, what universe, all that stuff. So we'll hopefully figure this out come April 1st when Morbius hits theaters worldwide. Look for our review of Morbius when it hits digital or streaming. We like to wait a little bit further so that people get a chance to watch it and react to it, watch it a second time, and yada, yada, yada. Like we see it in the theaters, but we want to wait for a little bit. So check that out. I believe it's going to be that 45-day, 50-day window before it hits streaming or on digital at least, and we'll record our podcast episode, Adam and I, soon after that. So you guys get an initial reaction after it's hit digital. But until then, if you want to like, you know, prepare yourself even some more after listening to this, who is get a Marvel unlimited subscription and check that out and read Spider-Man 101 uh, in October from 1971 to see his re- introduction. He's had a few series of his own. It was a more recent series that's come out in the past couple of years of Morbius. Uh, so check those out, get it, get your own little feel of who Morbius is as a character and see how that translates to the big screen come April 1st. Uh, but yeah, and if you're looking forward to looking at the Moon Knight episode, check that out. We released that this week as well. Who is Moon Knight? And uh, look for our other regular episodes that come out every Tuesday on capesandtights.com or Apple and Spotify, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. But until next time, this has been Comic Books. Comic Books. This has been Capes and Tights, a comic book and pop culture podcast. I'm your host, Justin Soderberg. Peace.